In this class we want to talk about challenges to trade union power. A trade union is an organisation specialising in an industry where uh, members are employed. So we could have um, a trade union for printers or a trade union for engineers or car workers or uh, we have trade unions for specific occupations. So a trade union is simply a collection or a, a collective of people who subscribe to uh, certain rules, rules of the trade union, pay membership fees and gain benefits from membership of the trade union uh, through protection of employment, conditions of employment, uh, advice about working conditions and issues associated with work. So trade unions are organisations specialising in particular industries and particular types of worker. They were established to support and advise, uh, advise um, employees. The aim is to protect and secure and improve the interest of their members. If there were no tra trade unions there would only be employers on one side and the employers would be strong. They would be the ones who uh, do the employing and they would dictate the conditions of the employment, the, the type of work, uh, the hours worked, um, health and safety issues and so on. So it was felt, and this happened spontaneously, the workers spell, uh, felt that having uh, an organisation on their side which would match the strength of the employers would lead to a better working standards for the members, a better uh, way of working overall, so that negotiations would happen uh, between parties which were roughly the same strength, the trade unions on one side and the employers on the other. So the workers came together and as I said it, it almost happened spontaneously. Uh, it was in a sense inevitable or almost logical that the workers would combine in this way and form themselves into trade unions to protect their interest. Clearly an individual worker is very weak when negotiating with an employer but when all the workers get together and negotiate as one they are much stronger. Trade unions tend to be independent bodies working to secure employee rights and welfare they work to provide better working conditions and safe conditions for employees. So they have got very specific objectives to improve the conditions of their members, their working conditions, to improve their remuneration, to improve uh, rest times and gain holiday entitlements and so on. And they do this through negotiation. If the negotiations fail, there may be industrial disputes, there may be strikes, um, there may be all sorts of issues associated with putting pressure on the employers to concede better terms to the workers. Clearly um, this is all very controversial because many people would say, well, perhaps the trade unions have too much powers and they're able to gain too many concessions and that makes industry here uncompetitive and that's why let's say the UK experiences so many imports from countries which are cheaper producers but then the trade unions may counter that argument by saying but look at the conditions of the workers in those other countries working in sweatshops working for very little uh, working under appalling conditions in, in many many parts of other countries. So there is a debate but what we have in the UK is we have a system of industrial relations with employers on one side and trade unions on the other side and a recognition on both parts of their mutual interests. So they negotiate. Trade unions play a significant role uh, to ensure that there is effective communications between employers and the, the workforce. So the employers 
inform the trade unions as to what they're thinking and what their policies are and the trade unions can then report back to their members so the the members know exactly what the the employers are thinking so it, it's a good communications mechanism communications must be two ways and the employers must be uh, aware and committed to company aims and objectives so it, sorry the employees should be aware and committed to the company aims and objectives um, it's important that the employees know what the company is trying to do they understand the company they understand the direction in which the company is moving and that the employees subscribe to this they recognize it's in their interest as well and they will attempt to support the, the company in its efforts so communications are two ways one way from from management to the workers but the other is the workers also feeding back to the management about what they feel about working practices and the style of management the trade unions can improve the levels of employee satisfaction uh, they can negotiate pay for example and security and working conditions and do they do this on behalf of their members they are constantly monitoring the conditions that the workers are operating in um, looking at their remuneration looking at their salaries and wages and attempting to improve this and constantly negotiating and in contact with the employers to ensure that the the workers are being dealt with fairly So to play a significant role to ensure organizations continually, continually provide opportunities for continuous development and training programs. That's also part of the role of the trade unions, to ensure that they, the workers are adequately trained, they understand the, the need for health and safety, for example, but also they have career opportunities, opportunities to improve their working conditions and improve the type of work they do so the, the trade unions support and advocate training programs and trying to improve the lot of the worker employees must have the necessary skills required to perform their jobs clearly that's the case if the employees do not have the necessary skills they can't perform the job role and therefore they are in a sense of no use to themselves to the or to the company in a sense if if the employee does not is not capable of performing the role they are not an employee so it's important rather than dismiss these people to give them the opportunity to learn and develop the skills and the trade unions are very good at uh, suggesting training programs and providing training programs indeed for workers to ensure that the workers are skilled and that their skills are kept up to date and this could be in all sorts of ways it's not just specific to the particular type of work in which the the workers engaged but also looking at areas like curriculum vitae development looking at uh, short courses that the workers can do to improve their skills and and get recognized qualifications so that the the quality of the workforce is improved and trade unions are keen that these type of programs are implemented so that workers have the opportunity to improve themselves and make themselves almost indispensable within the workplace they are good quality workers doing good quality work and therefore it's in the interest of the management to treat them properly pay them properly and have good industrial or employee relations with those people uh, economic and political change has led to major impacts on the trade unions and these are the challenges faced by the trade unions but economies have changed immensely over the last probably 20 or 30 years uh, from the end of the second world war in the west in particular um, there was a type of benign interventionism based on Keynesian economics the governments 
uh, in many countries took responsibility to bring about full employment. But of course the downside of that was that uh, people felt that they were going to have a job irrespective of what their skills were or what they were like. They were going to have a job for life. The government would, in a sense, create the, um, the climate in which this would happen. And therefore, the workers didn't have to worry too much. Well, that, that all changed in the 1970s with the, the demise, almost, of Keynesian economics and the advent, or the re, re-emergence, as, as it probably better termed, the re-emergence of what's known as monetarism. Uh, with greater emphasis on market forces and free markets and deregulation of markets and so on, workers became more vulnerable and suddenly they they knew that the, the government was no longer committed to the objective of full employment. They were committed to enabling the markets to work and then if the workers found work, that was good. If the workers didn't find work, the workers would have to improve themselves. So there was a greater emphasis on personal development from the 1970s. And of course this weakened the role of the trade unions. The trade unions were suddenly confronted by a whole new climate. So the last two decades have shaped the way in which trade unions are organised and operate. Um, Since the Industrial Revolution in the UK back in the 1700s. Industries and the type of jobs people do have changed. We know that in the context of the UK for example uh, there's been a long movement from engineering, heavy engineering back in, in the back in the 1700s 1800s right through to the present day where it's more service based occupations today tourism, insurance, banks, accountancy, um, advertising agencies, fashion agencies, restaurants and so on. So the structure of the UK economy has changed immensely over the years. And this has meant that the trade unions have had to modify their their objectives and, and, and what and how they dealt, I should say, with the employers, because the employers have changed. There are fewer and fewer big steel producers. There are fewer and fewer uh, heavy engineering industries, which means the trade unions are dealing with smaller companies, and that requires a different uh, approach, a different tactic. So the trade unions have had to adjust in the face of changing economic circumstances. Britain dominated manufacturing in the 18th century. The last two cent- uh, decades uh, has seen a steady decline in manufacturing and the rise of sectors, as I said earlier, such as finance, services, and voluntary sector, and fashion, and so on. So the trade unions have to adopt to this. That's the point. The working culture has influenced the way trade unions operate, um, the way they campaign and political lobbying, uh, lobbying for workers' rights. Uh, the working culture has, has changed immensely. Um, many people now work and don't see the need for trade unions, and they don't become members of trade unions. Uh, many people work and they themselves take responsibility for getting educational qualifications and professional qualifications and and they have confidence in those qualifications that they will get work as a consequence of that and therefore they don't need the trade unions. So there's a changing work culture. The, the attitude of um, the attitude and working culture I should say has changed from traditional working routine workers expected to work full time on permanent long term contracts for example now there's more flexibility in the labour force there is more movement in the labour force people do not necessarily work for the same company for their life they they move jobs many times they might move location many times 
um, and employers have to recognize that the labor force have got this type of mobility and independence so the employers um, strike arrangements with workers directly bypassing the need for trade unions employment contracts have changed significantly there has been a rise in zero hour contracts part time and also freelance work and temporary contracts um, a lot of people take contracts that are not uh, permanent contracts in the traditional sense the traditional sense being uh, someone works for the company for let's say 40 hours a week for 50 weeks a year or whatever now there is uh, sometimes people only work when they're called in to work so they work on it day to day um, if they're not needed the company doesn't call them uh, some people say that this is very unfair because people can't plan their lives they can't get uh, money to buy houses they can't get mortgages they can't borrow money to buy a car they can't they can't plan their lives properly because they don't know if they're going to work or not but that's a, a facet of working today that's what's happened and that's what has emerged and the trade unions fight this but it's um, it's difficult because that is a process that is uh, that's a process that's just developed and it's a process that seems to be continuing and if anything getting more prevalent the proliferation of apprenticeships and work related qualifications has gained more important importance over traditional qualifications uh, there was a move towards everyone becoming a graduate just about students were expected to graduate and in the last few years there's been greater emphasis on the the role of apprenticeships and on the job learning where younger people would go and join companies and pick up skills and pick up um, education through gaining vocational qualifications uh, through gaining specific qualifications for the particular jobs and local technical colleges may offer particular courses which will help the apprentices and so on so apprenticeships have come back onto the scene apprenticeships were originally very important in the early part of the 20th century and in the right up to the 1950s and 60s but after that there was a decline with the expansion of higher education but now it's returning to to that and trade unions have to modify their approach they recognize now that more people will have perhaps apprenticeships and work related qualifications as opposed to very traditional and standard qualifications so they're dealing with a much more heterogeneous working population as I said earlier job security has become an increasing concern Employment, unemployment and redundancies are high and a constant threat um, the, the trade unions are faced with employers who can and will make people redundant if, if they, it's in the interest of the business perhaps in the past there was more reticence on the part of the employers to do this for fear of provoking a wider strike or a wider uh, or a worsening I should say of industrial or employee relations so now there seems to be less fear on the part of the employers about uh, laying people off or uh, making people redundant or increasing levels of unemployment um, this could be a factor related to the overall decline in the power and significance of trade unions so it's a constant threat and the trade unions have to find ways in which they can counter this also workers have less rights and protection at work 
uh, governments have progressively over a long period of time changed the law and made let's say secondary picking picketing has become illegal um, so trade unions find it difficult to get support when there's a strike um, the calling a strike has become more complex they must have um, a certain percentage in favour and it must be a secret ballot and, and so on uh, there has to be due notice given to the employers of a strike and um, it means that there is less protection at work the, the trade unions are less able to make their case with force um, so they're in a weakened position and the the law in in the country the law in various countries have has changed to make it difficult for the trade unions to operate in a very powerful manner they they have now less uh, capacity it's been taken away their rights have been taken away and some people would say they were taken away because they abused the rights they were calling strikes for very small reasons and the strikes had damaged businesses and caused businesses to move overseas causing unemployment and and so on but whatever the reason whether that's true or not whatever the reason uh, it's generally felt to be the case that trade unions today are weaker than they were in the past so political and economic change have impacted on trade, un trade union movement political changes people are less sympathetic to the trade unions um, people are taking more responsibility for their own qualifications and their skill development and, and doing individual deals or negotiating individual contracts within employers and also the economic climate has changed uh, the Keynesian system of uh, the commitment to full employment and to low rates of inflation and so on that that it seems to have gone on to the back burner governments don't talk about it so much of course governments will never say probably that they're not committed to full employment they'll always say they're committed to full employment but they don't use economic policy uh, to directly bring about full employment instead they cr use economic policy to create the climate which can bring about full employment so for example they reduce corporation tax making it more profitable to have a business uh, more profitable to have a business means more employment so instead of going straight to solve the problem of unemployment they are going through the supply side of the economy creating more incentive for people to set up businesses providing more support for people to set up businesses uh, more support for education more support for vocational education so the economic background that uh, that lies behind the activities of the trade unions that economic background has changed trade unions were mainly established for the manufacturing industries mainly established um, to bring about improvements of uh, conditions of employment in heavy engineering and in uh, many of the the sweatshops uh, the uh, the weaving and the the carpet making and the the clothing manufacturing and so on to bring about better working conditions um, so the trade unions were were brought into existence to try and improve the lot of the members but as I said those types of industries have now either gone or they have mutated into something totally different so that the need for the trade unions is not as strong uh, membership was strong until the industry suffered heavy job losses so with heavy job losses in many parts of course the trade unions became weakened because they lost their membership this happened for example in the in the UK with the the mine workers strike um, the mine workers pointed out that the 
the employers were trying to close mines and they had a big strike. Um, but they stayed out uh, on strike for a long time. And But eventually the mines did close. And as the mines closed, less miners. Less miners, smaller trade union. Smaller trade union, weaker trade union. So the trade unions faced this problem of uh, a changing political and a changing economic base and they must flex according to that. New industries don't seem to attract the, the need for trade unions. Uh, for example in telecommunications or in, uh, in many areas there, there seems to have been a change in the role of trade unions and some even would say the need for trade unions they seem to have smaller organisations and also employees tend to be on temporary contracts so the employees are more interested in getting a full-time contract a permanent contract and to do that they're getting qualifications and performing their work well to please the employers to get full-time con uh, full uh, contracts what they don't want to do is to join the trade union and go on strike and be seen as uh, a troublemaker perhaps by the employer. Now you could argue of course all of this is done on fear. People are afraid of losing their jobs or afraid to make a ripple, afraid to upset the employers and hence the employers have won in the battle between the trade unions and the employers. In the ideal state as we started this talk uh, there would be some sort of balance between the, the trade unions and the employers. But um, as time has gone on it seems that the employers have, uh, have won this battle. The trade unions are becoming weaker. There is therefore, a, many people suggest, a need for the government to ensure that uh, employee relations is conducted fairly and that employers do not bully the workers, do not uh, have bad conditions of employment, uh, working long hours for little money and so on. So maybe the trade unions has been replaced by law to some extent. New policies and laws have made it difficult for unions and representatives to negotiate and act on wor uh, worker interest. Um, there has been a whole raft of, of new laws and regulations and directives and so on uh, related to the conduct of employee relations. Uh, I mentioned some earlier the uh, the problem the, the issue of having a strike is now very difficult for the trade unions they have to make sure that the members really want to the strike they have to make sure that the strike is related to an issue within the company clearly within the company they have to make sure that uh, the the picket lines if they're going to try and have a strike the picket lines are manned only by the employees of the company they have to make sure of many uh, requirements which are laid down by law. So before strike action is taken it has to be well thought out, there has to be a good reason. And the general public seems to be turned against strikes as well. Um, political parties who do not believe in industrial action seem to win political power. So clearly that might be a reflection of the fact that people do not like strike action. And the public don't want to be inconvenienced. If the rail workers go on strike, then people can't use the trains. They can't get to wherever they want to go on work trips or on holidays or visit relatives or whatever. They're inconvenienced. They don't want that. So the trade unions lose sympathy. Political and economic instability has made it even more important to join a union. So paradoxically, whilst I've said all of the, the
things I've just mentioned about uh, what's happening in society um, because of the greater instability uh, because of the advent of very rapid technological change and um, because of globalization and because of the fear of losing jobs there is an even greater need for people to join trade unions to try and get some protection so paradoxically the need is there but and yet many people do not seem to to pick up on this maybe it's because now many people work for small organizations they're isolated they're away from the trade union uh, they feel that if they join a trade union they have to go to perhaps a different city and find a trade union and pay their dues and get signed up and they still feel alienated and distant in the past large companies say heavy engineering employing hundreds of people the trade union was on site now the trade union may be in a different town or in a different city that's where the nearest office is so people feel almost distant they feel alienated they feel separated from the trade union so although they they crave the security that the trade union can try and get them in terms of employment contracts and so on they find it difficult to join the trade union in the current climate trade unions are crucial they provide support and advice on job security employment contract pensions employment rights and training opportunities the trade unions don't just organize strikes perhaps I've oversold that one earlier in, in this talk the trade unions provide a lot of research a lot of support advice um, legal advice financial advice to their members uh, they advise workers about their rights in terms of employment and the conditions of employment they advise them about training opportunities and and the trade unions themselves sometimes organize training events so the trade unions are very important a very important part of the employment scene the problem about it is that uh, as I said earlier more and more people are moving on to part-time contracts and uh, smaller organizations more technical requirements at work and uh, more they're more separated from the trade unions so the trade unions find it difficult to maintain their membership base and hence the trade unions in a sense are becoming less important less influential so those are some of the challenges faced by trade unions it's um, a constantly evolving situation uh, there's nothing to say that it won't reverse itself and the trade unions will become powerful again um, there's nothing to say that it won't continue and trade unions will become a part of history um, we can see the good side in what the trade unions do in terms of uh, employment rights advice on pensions financial advice legal advice training and uh, also making us aware of what's happening overseas in employment overseas and making us aware of the ethical considerations we should have when we buy products from certain parts of the world or and so on they, they they're constantly informing us so there is no doubt they do a good job uh, it's maybe just a simply a question of the evolution the the emergence of the economy in this particular direction that the the trade unions find it difficult to cope with the changes moving to smaller organizations smaller businesses more flexible the impact of globalization and cheap products um, the constant threat of redundancy and loss of employment because of imports that are much cheaper um, so the trade unions find it difficult to be able to accommodate all of these various changes that are going on in society that's all we're going to deal with in 
this session so I'm going to leave this one and say thank you for watching.